Hi, and welcome to Headspace. I'm Dr. Shelby Harris. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist who specializes in behavioral sleep medicine. Today, I'll be answering a question submitted by Rohit, who asks, how do we measure the quality of our sleep? Is there a way to know how well we slept by ourselves? This is a great question to unpack, so let's dive right in. Having good, restorative, quality sleep is the foundation of keeping up our physical and mental health. However, sleep quality is a tough metric to measure because it's so subjective. There really isn't one standard definition of it in sleep medicine. But one benchmark that is widely used in sleep studies is called sleep efficiency, which essentially sees how consolidated and compressed your sleep is within the nighttime window. In other words, what percent of the time you're in bed are you actually asleep? You can find yours on any given night by taking the total number of sleep minutes you think you got, divided by the amount of time you're in bed. For example, if you're in bed from midnight to 8 a.m., but you're up for four hours in the middle of the night, your sleep efficiency rating is 50%, and that's not good at all. Sleep experts look for at least 85% sleep efficiency or higher meaning a minimum of 85% of the time you're in bed, you're asleep. Now, if you get into bed at midnight, fall asleep immediately and wake up at 8 a.m., that would be a 100% sleep efficiency score. And while that might sound great, it's actually considered abnormal. Most people take 10 to 20 minutes to fall asleep and then have some quick natural awakenings in their night from their sleep cycle. Also, sleep quantity and sleep quality aren't always directly related. If you're in bed for eight hours, but only sleeping in two hour chunks with multiple awakenings, that means your sleep quality is poor, even though you're technically getting the recommended number of hours. At the end of the day, beyond the numbers, the most important thing is how you feel. For those of you who think you aren't getting good quality sleep, I encourage you to keep a sleep diary to document and notice any patterns in the morning Find out your sleep efficiency for the night by estimating what time you went to bed and what time you woke up. How long do you think it took you to fall asleep? And if you had any awakenings, how long did it take you to fall back asleep? Then calculate your total sleep time. Also, look for signs throughout the day of how you feel and make note of them. I always like to say to give yourself 30 to 45 minutes when you first wake up to fully start monitoring how you feel. Not everyone just hops right out of bed. But after an hour of waking up, if you're still not feeling okay, that might be a strong indicator that your sleep quality wasn't restorative. Mm. Other questions to ask yourself are, do you notice excessive drowsiness or fatigue throughout the day? Are you having difficulty concentrating or paying attention? It's normal for people to have a dip in energy here and there, especially after lunchtime. But if you find that sleepiness is impacting your life multiple times a day consistently, you might have an underlying sleep issue. Sleep apnea, for example, is a super common issue that many folks don't even realize they have. If you find yourself consistently snoring, gasping, choking, or having any pauses in breathing throughout the night, and you're extremely tired during the day, it might be worth getting a consult with a doctor. Having anxiety or experiencing any other mental health disorder can also impact sleep quality, as it can cause racing thoughts and difficulty relaxing at night. So be sure to log any of these contributing symptoms, feelings, and states of mind. Beyond underlying health conditions, what are some other factors that could be impacting your sleep quality? First and foremost, if you have an irregular sleep schedule, that can be one of the biggest culprits. Be sure to set a consistent bedtime and wake time every day, even on the weekends, to get your body on a more regulated rhythm. Other factors include monitoring your caffeine, alcohol, and nicotine intakes, which can all throw off your internal sleep cycles. Also, check to see if you may be experiencing side effects from a medication. Diuretics, for example, can sometimes cause you to wake up a lot in the middle of the night. Next, take in your sleep environment. Note if it's optimally set up for sleep. Is it too warm in your room or too cold? Is your room quiet and dark? And do you limit your screen time before bed? Are there any external noises that could be keeping you up? Or do you have a partner that snores and wakes you up? Your own observations can serve as your best tool in revealing any sleep behaviors, and ultimately, in taking steps towards better sleep. Thanks so much for watching today. If you have any sleep-related questions, 
please send them over to askasleepexpert at headspace.com and we'll do our best to answer one in a future video. Until then, sweet dreams. Thank you.